In this video, I would like to perform all of the CRUD operations in Node, Express, and MySQL. So in the previous video, we've seen that we can get our groceries, and just as a reminder, I'll do an npm start, and we can check that the home route is not found. We've set up and handled any errors that may occur, and in particular this is a 404. And if we get the groceries endpoint, we get the data associated with what's in the database. So if we go to MySQL, we have this groceries database, and we have this table also called groceries, and we have three entries, bread, milk, and corn. And we can also get this in Postman and we get the same uh, response back as expected. But Postman is good because we'll be able to send data associated with it. So in a um, request body or something like that. So we can hit an endpoint um, for a post and update and delete. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can set up a post endpoint. So what we wanna do is we wanna post a grocery to the database so, you know, we can call this router and we can set post and we'll hit the same URL and we'll call the grocery controller, but this time we'll call it post grocery. So when we hit that endpoint groceries with a post request, it will be handled by this post grocery controller. But just before I go into the controller, I would like to take a look at the actual query itself and we can create a static method here and I'll just call this post and what post will take, it will, it will take the item and that's the string of the name of the grocery so it could be tomato for example and note that we don't need the ID here because when we set up our MySQL database we set up auto increment for the ID so what we can do here is we can return a database execution, so uh, an SQL query, and we set up you know, that DB in a previous video with a connection pool. And if we execute a particular query, what we wanna do is we wanna insert a new record into the database. So we can just say insert into, and we want that in the groceries table and we want to insert item here. So we don't need ID item because of the auto incrementation. All we need to do is say um, item. And if we had more data associated with that, then we'll have a comma separation here. So for example, cost or something like that. Um, but we just have item here. And we want to insert the item with the values that we receive from the request. So we need to use this syntax here where we have a question mark here and this is the item. Now we do this to escape any SQL injection and this is um, how we do that. So rather than having the item here directly, we have this question mark and uh, then we pass that in. And that should be the end of the uh, string there, not there. And that's just so like, you know, if we're on the front end and the client decides to be malicious and, you know, let's say they're filling in a form and they're filling in this um, fruit or vegetable or whatever the grocery item is, and then they have their, they want to post, um, you know, drop database or something like that. And to escape that, um, we need to escape the string and we can do this by using this variable syntax for the particular item we're escaping. So this is what the model will look like and before in the MVC pattern or in an API, we have our route, our model and our controller and the model is methods associated with retrieving or executing something to do with the data and to connect to the route or the view, we can have a controller. So let's just save that, and we can um, 
use our controller to do that or make a controller to do that and I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this structure here because we've done this in the previous video where we set up all the error handling and the get requests and asynchronous function and all of that but I'll just modify it a little bit here so rather than expecting all groceries we can say okay let's just call this post response and so when we get the JSON back this will also be the post response variable that we just defined and we in the model we have this static method post so we can just call that um, on the class itself rather than making a new instance and we can call the post and this just takes an item here so what we can do where does that item come from well in the request they're requesting a grocery um, to be sent to the database so the user is going to type in the string tomato for example so we can get that by the request body and we'll have a request body dot item here and the rest of it and this structure here is the same so with that if we save that and one thing to note is this should be actually be a 201 uh, for a resource being created so a 200 is the um, success and this is just this is also a 200 but this is a more specific 201 for a post request um, so we've got our route we hit this controller we make the post request we hit the controller we have this um, method here to handle the um, SQL uh, database interaction and we escape any uh, any malicious uh, SQL injections with this sort of format here and then we can um, oh okay so one thing you probably spotted here is this uh, functions being renamed here and we've renamed this to post grocery so that's why well, we're getting that error there and then we create the resource with this 201 by calling that post uh, method from our model so now if we save that now we can come into postman here and we can make this post request so post request the same URL but this time we're going to need some data in here so we can come to body and we want some JSON data here so we'll just say raw JSON and we'll just create the object here like that and we only need to send the item we don't need the item ID because of the auto incrementation so let's say we have our item tomato and we post this now we get this response here and if we take a look at MySQL and we refresh our groceries table we get this um, new entry here now notice it says 5 rather than 4 and that's because before I made this video I just tried one out and it incremented to 4 and then I deleted it <clears throat> so this is in fact correct and what we expect so now what we want to do is we want to update this so maybe we don't want a tomato here we want something else like an apple so let's uh, make it possible to do that and it's going to be a very similar process so once again we hit our route and I might just copy this down here like this and rather than post we want to update so the request for that is put and we'll just hit this put controller here like that and okay so then we come to our model because <coughs> we want to handle the data or the database so we come here and we create this method and I'll just call it um, might just call it update and what we need to pass into this is we need the item but we also need the ID because we need to come to a certain row in the database and then for that row update 
the item otherwise we wouldn't know which row to update so what we can do here is if we have the ID we can update it so we can say okay let's change this query to and that also means we need this ID in here like that um, actually this might need to come first because when we make the query we can say update groceries or so updating the groceries table and what we need to do is we need to change the um, item here so we need to set that item to something else so we can say set item equal to question mark where that item is the string of the grocery that's going to be sent there and updated and that's where the ID is equal to the ID that's passed to it. So let's say we're updating ID 5. Um, we're updating tomato. So we can come to this row tomato and then for that item we're setting tomato equal to apple for example. So we can go ahead and we can save that and now all we need to do is hook up our controller. So once again I'll copy this format here and I'll call this uh, what did I call it put put grocery yeah so we hit the put route and we hit this put grocery controller so this time okay this can all be changed to put but this method here I think we called it update so let's coming that's coming from the model there update and the values we want to pass to the update function that we just called or created is we want this request body item but we also want the request body ID and that's all we have to do to handle the update so now if we go back to postman and we change this to a put request now we will need some extra data in here but let's just change this ID to 5 and we can change this word tomato to apple so now if we make this put request with postman we get this response back here we come to MySQL we refresh and then we get this uh, apple entry here so that's all good so that's you know create read update so now all we have to do is make it possible to delete a um, that row for example so say we want to delete this row apple we can do that with a request so the keyword for that request is just delete and we can call the delete grocery uh, controller one thing different here in this case is we're going to make it so that if we go to groceries say slash five then it'll delete it like that just so we can see how the query parameters work um, so what we can do is for a variable route we can assign that and um you know we can assign that number you know, grocery slash one, two, three, four, whatever it is, a variable in the query, uh, or in the um, parameter. So we can call it, we'll just call this ID, and this is gonna line up when we hit into our controller. But what we can do is, before we create our controller, we'll just interact with our database. So we come into the models here, and we'll have this function called delete. And this delete, it only needs the ID because it just needs to know the row number to delete that row. And we can execute a delete from groceries where ID equals something. So now all we need to do is set up our controller and we'll copy this format here once again and we will call our, um, we'll just call this 
delete. Delete grocery. And these are going to be the delete response. And I'll, I think, yeah, we, just, we call that delete here and delete grocery here, okay. So we just pass in the ID for the grocery we're deleting. And now I'll come over to Postman here and I'll make a delete request and I'll delete item five. Now we don't need any, uh, any body here. So if I make this delete request, okay, so we've got, couldn't make any response, couldn't get any response. So let's take a look at any errors that have occurred here. Okay, so one thing that we didn't do in this case is we aren't getting the, there's no body, we're getting the ID from the URL. So rather than request body, we're saying request.params.id. And with that, that should now work, okay. So now if we come to Postman and then we make the request, we get this response back, and if we refresh our database, it deletes Apple. So we've implemented all of the CRUD operations in Node and Express for a MySQL database. And just to quickly recap uh, where we're at, the, we've created a server, and we've created this route here called Groceries. So that if they go to the route groceries, we can make a get request. And the get request, um, you know, these are all the same route for the get, post, put, and delete. Oh, except the delete has an extra ID. But we have a different type of request being made. So we can hit that same URL. But depending on the request being made, we'll get, they'll get handled in a different way. And that's done through the controller. And before we, um, to connect the route response and the um, model together, that's done through the controller, but the model is where we interact with the database or data in general. And we've created these static methods on the class. And, you know, we've just done some SQL queries and we've escaped any uh, SQL injection uh, with this question mark and uh, variable sort of syntax here and we can pass in either a request body or request parameter in the case of post, update, and delete. And the controller is um, handling that request. One thing I just noticed is these should be 200s. These should be 200s here. It's only the post request that should be a 201. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, we're essentially, we're getting JSON data and we're either getting it or getting all of it. We're able to post something to the database, uh, update the database and delete the database. So that's, you know, completes the, um, the back end for our MVC CRUD application in Node and Express and MySQL. In the next video, I'd like to hook this up to a front end um, you know, single page application. So I'll be using Angular for that, but it's the same for any front end frameworks that you choose to use. There's this separation between the back end and the front end um, in the terms, in when making APIs and getting data from API as opposed to server side rendering. And this is the more common approach, I suppose. So if you wanna see how to hook this up to a front end framework in Angular, so we'll make a Angular node MySQL uh, complete cycle. Uh, please check out the next video. Okay, thank you.